Is it possible to ruin your whole computer by deleting just one file in Windows while it's running? Could you possibly screw up that bad even by accident? That's exactly what we're gonna be trying out in this video in real life at a computer. And I was actually curious myself because I've done videos in the past where just for fun, I would delete things like the entire System32 folder or the entire Windows registry. And of course, that would ruin the computer. But I wanted to know if there was a single file that was important enough where deleting just that one would render your computer useless. And it turns out as a little bit of a spoiler, it's a little bit more difficult than I initially imagined because Windows has a lot of built-in safeguards to save people from themselves, but it is in fact possible. So we're gonna go through the most important files in Windows, delete them, and see what happens. And obviously I need to tell you guys, don't do this on your real computer or a friend's computer. I'm gonna be doing this in a virtual machine, which will behave exactly the same as a regular computer, but doing this on your own computer could ruin it, even if it doesn't seem to do it on mine. Just be aware of that. Before we get started, I do wanna thank the sponsor of this video, privacy.com. You probably have heard me talk about this before. It's a great service and website that I've used for years myself. Privacy.com is a free service that allows you to create unique virtual payment cards to buy things online instead of using your real card everywhere, therefore protecting your banking and identity information. You can do things like creating single-use burner cards or so-called merchant cards, which only work at one retailer, so the card won't work anywhere else, even if that number happens to get stolen. Plus, there's other features like setting limits on cards, so you'll never have to worry about getting overcharged. There's card sharing, a Chrome extension that can autofill card details, and also iPhone and Android apps. And for a limited time, if you sign up now by going to privacy.com slash Theojo, new users are gonna get $5 for free to spend on your first purchase. So yes, it's a free service and you're getting a free sign up bonus, pretty cool. All you'll have to do is link a checking account so that you know you can actually pay for stuff that you buy. So again, be sure to go to privacy.com slash Theojo and you can also check that same link in the description. And now without further ado, let's get to the fun part of trying to ruin another computer. So the first file that I thought for sure would actually ruin the computer is the Windows kernel file. So the kernel of Windows and really any operating system is like the core file that kind of interfaces with all the drivers, the hardware, that sort of thing. It's like the core of the operating system. And if you delete that, it pretty much should ruin the operating system. And in Windows, this file is known as NTOS kernel .exe and is located right in System32. Now, because this is a core system file, you'll probably notice if you look in the System32 folder, it will not appear even if you do have hidden files and folders enabled in the file explorer. So you actually have to go in and change another setting, which is to uncheck hide protected operating system files. And if you try to do this, you will get a warning. It says you have chosen to display protected operating system files in File Explorer. These files are required to start and run Windows. Deleting or editing them will make your computer inoperable. Are you sure you wanna display these files? So obviously we do, so we can delete it. And then now you will notice that this file does appear. And surprisingly, the entire Windows core kernel file is only around 10 megabytes. It's right there. Now, normally if you try to just go and delete it, there are some protections that will prevent you from doing this to save you from yourself. And it will warn you that this is controlled by the trusted installer system account. So what we instead will have to do is change the ownership so you can delete the file. I'm not gonna go through how to do this whole process because it's a little bit involved, but if you really wanna know, you can probably just look it up yourself. So anyway, after we do that, gain control of the file, we can simply right click and delete it. And surprisingly, nothing actually happens noticeably. I assume this is because the file is really only used at startup and maybe in other situations, but for the most part, it's not really used while Windows is running. So what we can do is simply restart the computer and see what happens. And of course, as you can see, it immediately notices something is wrong and it starts to automatically try and repair the Windows installation. And to my surprise, it actually was able to succeed. It simply repaired or replaced the file and booted up like normally. I thought for sure that if the kernel was deleted, surely that would ruin the installation, but it turns out that's not the case. Now, if you didn't have some kind of recovery partition, obviously that would probably be a problem, but it seems like it's pretty easy to actually fix a deleted kernel, which I thought was the most important file and that would ruin it, but no. So then I was really thinking, man, if deleting the Windows kernel can't ruin the computer, is there even anything? So then I thought about another one, the winload.exe file. This file is known as the bootloader and this actually loads the kernel file and core device drivers. So this actually is loaded before the kernel's loaded. So I thought, hmm, maybe if I prevent Windows from even loading, then it won't even be able to do the repair even if it tries to do it. So I deleted that file, going through the same process, you have to take permission of it and then right click and delete it. And then again, nothing really happens here until I restart because it's only gonna be activated during Windows restart. 
So I restart it. And again, Windows does an automatic repair. And again, it actually succeeds. So at this point, any normal person should probably be happy that Windows can actually do a decent job of repairing even some of the most important files being deleted. But right now, I'm annoyed because I want to ruin this computer. So the next one I tried is HAL.DLL. This is a critical DLL file, which is known as the hardware abstraction layer. And this is basically how the computer connects the kernel to the hardware, like the CPU and the chipset and stuff. So then I was thinking, well, maybe if I delete this, then again, you know, if the operating system can't even connect to the chipset, then maybe it will fail to do the repair. But sure enough, when I delete it and restart it, yes, again, this is able to be completely repaired using the automatic repair tool. So next I thought, well, you know what, let's try and go after the registry because I remember in one of my old videos, I tried deleting a bunch of the registry keys in the registry editor and that did actually ruin everything. So what I did is went to the actual registry file for the system keys, which is just called system in system 32. But unfortunately I was not able to actually delete this file because it was in use. And even after trying several things like trying to use the command prompt to force Windows to delete it, it simply would not cooperate because it was just in use the whole time. So this doesn't really work because while I am confident if you were able to delete one of these videos, it would ruin the Windows installation, it doesn't satisfy my requirement of being able to delete one file while Windows is running. So I can't delete it while it's running, so it's not gonna count. So finally, I realized what had to be done. Because Windows was able to keep accessing the repair partition and all that to be able to just replace any missing files, I would have to do something that would prevent Windows from even starting up in the first place, so it couldn't even get to the point of trying to repair it. So therefore, I realized I had to go after the boot manager. Basically, the boot manager tells the computer what operating systems are even installed on the hard drive. And boot manager, if you select Windows, will then actually activate WinLoad, which is the bootloader. So the boot manager actually happens before the bootload. So for example, if you've ever seen this screen, which comes up if you have multiple installations of Windows telling you which operating system you wanna boot from, this is the boot manager. And then you select it, and then it boots into the operating system. So if we delete this, theoretically, it shouldn't even be able to load any operating systems at all. Now, in some cases, apparently the boot manager is located on the primary installation partition of Windows, so the C drive. But in this case, and I think in most cases actually, it's actually located in the system reserved partition it, which is created when you install Windows. And this partition is normally not even visible. If you go into the disk manager, you will see it's there, but it will not have a letter assigned to the drive. So what we can do is just add a letter and assign it to drive so we can access it through File Explorer. And normally, if you look in this folder, it will look completely empty because these are all hidden system files. So again, you do have to enable File Explorer to show system files and hidden files. And once you do that, you'll then see that there are several important system files in here, including the file that's just called boot manager, which is one of the very first things that the computer even looks at. So no surprise, this file is also protected by trusted installer. So we take ownership of that, just delete it, and now we can restart for the moment of truth. And sure enough, this time around, it doesn't try to repair Windows. We simply get the error. An operating system wasn't found. Try disconnecting any drives that don't contain an operating system. Press Control, Alt, Delete to restart. So now Windows is unable to repair the installation because as far as the computer understands, there's not even a Windows installation to repair in the first place. So it looks like we have succeeded. We have made the computer unusable by deleting just one file. It took a little bit of work, but we have done it. Now, is your computer technically ruined beyond repair? Well, no, not really, because the Windows installation is still there, all the files are still there, it's just that the computer doesn't know that. It would take a little bit of extra work, but theoretically you could get a Windows installation disk or repair disk and put it in. It might be able to auto detect and do a repair, or you might have to manually go through and somehow rebuild the boot manager. So while I'm sure it is possible to fix, yes, it would take some work. So anyway, thanks again to privacy.com for sponsoring this video. And again, if you go to privacy.com slash Theojo, new users for a limited time are gonna be able to get $5 for free to apply to your first purchase. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you guys wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is why you should never make in-app purchases in smartphone apps before watching this video because you'll save a bunch of money and you'll just have to watch it to see why, but I highly recommend it. So thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.